Hey, what up everybody? Uh, this is Stevie Breach coming to you. Today's going to be a, a topic video about the uh, 2014 Superstar of the Year. Uh, what I'm using uh, for the basis of this uh, award, I guess I can show off my slammy here, is uh, basically um, I used the NoDQ.com, uh, Aaron Rift and, and uh, Jeff Meacham. They sat down and they uh, have done discussion videos. I don't know if I'm a day behind or two days behind. I know that today they posted the video and they posted up the poll for the tag team of the year. And you're supposed to go over to NoDQ.com and vote. But I thought this would make for a good video discussion. was basically just uh, talking about this and giving my thoughts on who it would be. In this um, you know, poll, they, they've given off seven names of who they thought the superstar of the year should be. Uh, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, and Dean Ambrose. All of these guys are big superstars inside of the WWE. Honestly, I, I'm going to use their votes uh, when it comes down to it, but I know that uh, basically, you know, superstar of the year uh, is basically just sort of WWE uh, related, uh, and I know that you know you you give you know TNA a shot for being a second-rate promotion, uh, but I honestly was a little bit surprised uh, that AJ Styles uh, was not on this list. I know that AJ Styles, um, you know, isn't in TNA anymore, and uh, he's not in WWE, uh, but he is a big name uh, in uh, the world of wrestling. You know, he made the uh, the jump from TNA when basically you know Dixie Carter lowballed him uh the offer and uh you know now he wrestles for new japan and he wrestles for ring of honor um as far as i know uh i don't think he's wrestled in any um uh, championship matches for ring of honor i don't follow the product the whole bunch and i don't even follow um uh, New Japan at all, but I know that he was the champion of New Japan for a long time, coming in, joining the Bullet Club, uh, and he dropped the title um, a few months back, uh, but I, I honestly have been really surprised about how AJ has left TNA, I was really, you know, I wasn't, you know, I want to say scared for him, but I was worried about him, and it looks like he's even a bigger star now, you can see that when he wrestles uh, independent shows around the United States, um, he's he's a big draw, uh, they, they easily draw more than a TNA house show does, with no you know, basically no television promotion, uh, just, you know, local indies, just getting it done, bringing in a big name, and everybody wants to go see him because they know they're going to get a, lot, a, a big match. There's a, there's a sort of a cloud on AJ right now about his styles clash, but it is what it is, you know, it's wrestling. Um, I, I don't know, some people want him to ban the match, uh, the move, and not be able to do it anymore. All I know is I'm not taking the move. I love seeing the move. I, I hate to see another guy get hurt, um, but... Uh, you know, he, as long as he thinks he can keep doing it, and as long as the guy that's going to be taking it thinks he can take it, do it. That's all I got to say. But now, you know, back to what they did. I'll, I'll, I'll cross off some guys really, really fast. Dean Ambrose is a big talent. He's going to be a big talent in the future. I, a lot of people are calling him the, the new Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I think is a little bit unfair. I, I'm not going to give it to him because, honestly, he did wrestle in a main event at the Hell in the Cell uh, pay-per-view, uh, the match that didn't have a finish because of uh, Bray Wyatt. I, I'm not even going to put him in contention to win this because I don't think that he's reached his potential. Um, he is on the radar in WWE, I think he is going to be a big spot of the future, but I don't think he's had his future yet, so bam, he's not getting the superstar of the year. Um, from there, um, next one to, to cross off, I guess, would be Seth Rollins. He's been a big part of it, WWE, stepping up to the plate, winning the money in the bank, um, but as far as I know, you know, we saw the one attempt at a cash-in uh, on John Cena uh, after um, the Money in the Bank pay-per-view on Monday Night Raw, which was a good tie-in to you know, the WWE Network and the end of Monday Night Raw, trying to see you know what was going to be done. I'm really surprised that they haven't used the backstage pass, um, sort of like you know, they show you what's going on in the arena after uh, Raw ends to see like maybe you know Raw ends, and that's when you see an attempted cash-in, maybe you're seeing um, the guys, Booker T and Alex Riley, uh, sitting at the desk, and they throw back to the ring real fast as, as Seth Rollins goes to cash in on John Cena after he's had a hard-fought match. I'm not telling you that's where the cash in has to take place, but it would easily show you that backstage pass matters, and you need to turn on your WWE Network immediately after to see what's going down, and that'll lead you into seeing if you want to watch whatever comes on after. I know I, I know that sitting through three hours of wrestling is hard enough, and then asking somebody to sit through a half hour or more and maybe even see on the network and watch something after that. But there's been plenty of nights I've complained about watching Monday Night Raw for three hours, turned on the network, and watched you know two episodes of old school 1994 Monday Night Raw and not complained a second about watching th those two hours of wrestling. So I'm not sure. Uh, Randy Orton. 
uh, as a guy that really surprised a lot of people carrying the title up until WrestleMania before finally losing it to Daniel Bryan. Um, you know, a lot of people said that he wasn't going to be able to win the match against John Cena. He wasn't going to be able to survive through the Elimination Chamber. Uh, and then he goes in having the uh, three-way match, Daniel Bryan, Batista, and... Um, and himself, I'm an idiot. But, uh, you know, that really was a really good match. And, um, you know, from there on, uh, Orton's been involved, of course, the reboot of Evolution. He was involved in the match with Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. Um, but honestly, to me, he, he's really surprised me. He's never been one of my favorite guys. But he's had a few good matches uh, this year that I think have really stepped up to the plate. Uh, John Cena is a guy this year that has really sort of used this, uh, this year to sort of help put over guys. You can sort of think about, you know, Triple H as he was coming up to the top and, and, and sort of ending his in-ring career as a full-time wrestler. One of the biggest complaints about Triple H was that he was ba using his backstage power to put himself over and he wasn't inserting himself into feuds where he was sort of making stars for the future. He was just sort of worrying about himself, worrying about you know, where he was going to be on the pay-per-view and what that meant uh, to his... Um, you know, I guess you can say pay-per-view bonus or something like that. Uh, John Cena, uh, he didn't do what I think would have been done to, you know, have um, made a guy. Uh, basically, was um, he didn't lose the Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. I know that once I was at WrestleMania and I saw all the kids walking around the Superdome, all the kids walking around Access with their dads, I was thinking about all those kids crying on the way home from WrestleMania. And the dads sort of thinking, like, we just spent all this fucking money to go to WrestleMania. My kid's going home crying because Bray Wyatt beat John Cena. And uh, I sort of was like, hey, and maybe I do understand uh, why, um, you know, they're going to want to keep those kids coming to WrestleMania and asking them to go on that trip every year. Uh, and the dads are going to go because maybe the dads are wrestling fans. But if kids go home crying, that's not a trip that a lot of people are going to be wanting to make. But honestly, when it came down to it, they had three matches. I thought that if, if Bray Wyatt would have won the first match, John Cena easily could have won the next two. And, you know, whatever happened uh, to Bray Wyatt, you know, throughout the rest of the year, when next year's WrestleMania come around and they're trying to build up who these big guys are, or even throughout the year, you could throw out the fact that John Cena lost to Bray Wyatt. This is the guy that beat John Cena. Not only that, beat him on the biggest stage of them all at WrestleMania. I mean, that's a huge fact. I mean, it's it's been three years now, going on four. How often do we hear Miz talk about beating John Cena at WrestleMania 27? We hear it at least on, on every other Monday Night Raw. Whenever he has a backstage confrontation, that's the one feather that he pulls out of his cap, that he's main evented WrestleMania. And not only that, he's won his WrestleMania match. So, um... I don't know. That that really would have helped out Bray Wyatt. That's the one reason why I'm really not going to give it to Cena because I don't think he did what I think would have done uh, you know, its best uh, to really win this one. Uh, from here on out, that's going to leave Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, to me, is not going to win Superstar of the Year. Um, you know, He showed up at WrestleMania. Uh, he, he beat the streak. That might win the Oh My God Slammy of the Year. Uh, for you know, I, I was in that Superdome crowd and... Um, NoDQ.com put the picture up of us crying, sitting there in our seats. But uh, honestly, in my mind, uh, I don't think um, you know that, that Brock Lesnar and his part-time not working Monday Night Raw, not working SmackDown, not working Superstars, um, not working main events. Uh, you know, he worked. Um, well, let's see what he did. He showed up at the Royal Rumble. I think that's when he lost. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, he hasn't lost, but uh, he showed up at the Royal Rumble. Uh, that's when he had the match against. It was either Big Show or Mark Henry. I can't remember. He beat one of them. He broke his arm. Who gives a shit? He showed up. He beat Undertaker at WrestleMania. All right, that's impressive. Then we had to wait all the way until SummerSlam, and he beat John Cena. He beat John Cena on a technicality uh, at the next show, which was. Um, Battleground? I can't remember what the hell the name of the show was. But, I mean, that was the big-time main event. When, and Seth Rollins came running down uh, at the end when John Cena had the win in his pocket. The thing that they haven't even brought up for the fact that they're having a match that's going to be on pay-per-view, which should be the one selling point of, that Cena's been trying to get his hands on Rollins for months. And they haven't even talked about it because they don't like talking about the fact that Brock Lesnar isn't on Raw. He's not around. Uh, um, you know, it, it just sucks. To me, I think, uh, you know, I've grown, always grown up, whether if it was... 
Um, oh shit, that doesn't work. <laughs> but but um, you know, Hogan was on the shows, whether if it was you know showing, um, you know, you know the sort of the clips that got you to where you're going, or doing the interviews with me and Gene that they might have showed a few times, but they 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 mixed them up and they weren't always in the same order, so it made you feel like he was on Wrestling Challenge week in and week out. Or maybe they went to the event center and they 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 went and showed you what what Hogan was doing uh, that week to get ready for the show. But um, you know, Hogan. But uh, I mean, like you grew up, you had Macho Man, you had Bret. Hart, you had Shawn Michaels, you had The Undertaker, um, uh, you know, John Cena, whoever it is, however big of a star they were, you know, they were on the shows, uh, and that's what got you through the weeks. I mean, we, I might complain about having a championship match on Monday Night Raw that might be, you know, John Cena going up against. I don't want to really pick anybody or call anybody out. He doesn't even work for the company anymore. Kurt Hawkins. And I mean, they'll, they might build that up like it's like, oh, the championship match, it's going down. And you know in your heart that there's no way in the world Kurt Hawkins is going to beat, you know, John Cena on Monday Night Raw when he's a week away from a pay per view or something like that. You're just going along with the flow, hoping Raw ends sooner than later. But, um, you know, the champion was always there. So, you know, Brock, you had a good you had a good run. You beat Cena twice in the same year. You beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. But it's not going to beat what Daniel Bryan did. Uh, and Daniel Bryan didn't even work the whole year. But honestly, in my mind, when I think about 2014, I'm going to think about the highs and the lows of Daniel Bryan. And, and you know, he showed up. He had probably what's going to be the match of the year. Uh, one of the best wrestling matches, at least in WWE. Um, uh, at the Royal Rumble against Bray Wyatt. That really, really surprised me how good that match was to kick off the show. And then he didn't even get a number in the Royal Rumble. Everybody, I, He was my pick to win it, uh, and, he, and he wasn't even in. And uh, that really sucked. Um, Elimination Chamber, he's in there. Um, and then you go to WrestleMania, he beats Triple H. Then he be basically beats Evolution in a... In a uh, with, it was a three-way, but you know Triple H and Stephanie were out there uh, helping out all they could to either make sure Randy Orton... Or Batista walked out with the championship, and you know he had the big time confetti, um, you know, uh, going everywhere. That's gonna be a moment that I'm never um, gonna forget. I mean, it made up for you know being in the confetti fest at SummerSlam, and then getting the pedigree from Triple H, um, you know, the year before. Um, and it's just a huge storyline to me that basically started at WrestleMania 28 with him, you know, losing in seconds, and then basically. The yes chant turning into the no chant, which and turned into team hell no, and, and you know just building on a guy just, and uh, you know just all of the whole yes movement where all the fans basically made Vince McMahon, Triple H, and Stephanie change their minds, uh, not television wise and storyline, but in the boardroom, in the writing room, you know they had to sit down and say you know the crowd really wants this and basically we cannot have a WrestleMania main event where the crowd turns against us uh with Batista and Randy Orton whether you know I don't think anybody was going to walk out on there but basically it might have been ugly Batista versus Big Show on ECW ugly um of course from there you go to Extreme Rules he wins the uh I can't remember. I guess it was just an Extreme Rules match against Kane. Uh, he's supposed to go the next month to have a Buried Alive match. In that next month, basically, um, he gets married uh, the week after WrestleMania. He comes back. He loses his dad, and he has to leave to go to the funeral. He takes a week off. Um, you know, he comes back from that, and next thing you know, he's getting looked at by a doctor, and, uh, you know, they think that he has to have surgery, so that they get him worked on, they think he's going to come back from there, then it turns into, you think he's got to have Tommy John surgery, and as far as I know, you know, he was on Monday Night Raw, and they asked him, you know, if he was going to come back soon, and he did the yes, yes, yes chant, but I'm, I haven't seen a date, I don't know if WWE's trying to keep the secret, if he's going to do some Royal Rumble return, return at WrestleMania, return at the night after WrestleMania, um, but just, I can't believe the highs and the lows of this guy's got so you know he might not have wrestled the whole year and that might be the one reason why I didn't give it to Brock Lesnar as well but when I think about 2014 the superstar of the year award to me has to go to Daniel Bryan the guy won the biggest matches of the year beating Triple H and beating Randy Orton and Batista at WrestleMania 30 and I don't care if he didn't work the rest of the year but um, to me that's gonna be the moment that I always remember about 2014 so to me Daniel Bryan is my superstar of the year. Thanks, no DQ. Thank you to uh, Noah. Uh, Noah wasn't even in the video, but <laughs> he's my buddy. <laughs> but but uh, thank you to Meacham and thank you to Rift uh, for the video idea and uh, wish you guys the best.